Hey YouTube, today I'm going to be doing a comparison that was requested by a viewer and he wanted, this particular gentleman wanted me to compare the Court Mongoose revolver to the Smith & Wesson 586, the Smith & Wesson 686 and the Colt Python all at one time. So the ones that I chose here to compare them to are all exactly the same size. They are all 4 inch configurations, medium size frame revolvers. And before we go any further, I'm going to let you know that all four of these revolvers have been safety checked. There's nothing in them, and we are cleared to make this video. As I show them to you, I will, um, as I pick them up, I will show you that they are not loaded. So I'm going to go as quickly as I can since we have four of them here, and I'm going to start off with this Court Mongoose 357 Magnum. This was this is a German-made revolver that made by a company called Court, and it was started by Willie Court in the 1950s. And his goal was to make one of the finest revolvers ever made, and I think he came pretty close. And they are now distributed since 2016 by Nighthawk Customs, as you can see, and they're makers of some of the finest um, 1911s in the world. And they import them and they distribute them in the United States. Now these are all hand fit together. In Germany, they have a two-piece barrel that has an outer sleeve on it, as you can see right here where this breakup is. It's the outer sleeve and it incorporates the ventilator rib and the full under lug. They lock up in two places, as you can see when you hit this cylinder release here, it actually releases right here. And this is spring-loaded here, and that cylinder release pushes this in and releases the cylinder on it. So all court revolvers rotate counterclockwise. They all operate extremely smooth. They are all top quality, top build quality. They, they come with these smooth wood grips on them and just the build quality is bar none, very exceptional to say the least. It has a crown barrel on it and you're not gonna see any kind of flaws, any kind of any kind of wiggle or anything on them. They're serrated on top. They have adjustable sights on them. Just very awesome. One of the odd things is this is where the cylinder releases on a court revolver. One of the other things about it is you can change the cylinders out very quickly by pushing this little button here with your finger and put a nine millimeter cylinder in it. But look at this thing over, the build quality on it is just um, outstanding. Just a very well made revolver and they are very extremely pricey. So what we can compare this to is the next one we'll pick up. This is a vintage old Smith & Wesson 686. This happens to be one of the first ones that was ever released and this is a no dash one. So these came out in 1980 and this was an answer to the famous Colt Python. This came out for two different reasons, folks. It came out to so you, Smith & Wesson could compete with Colt, with the Colt Python, with the full underlug on it, and it actually resembles a Colt Python. And it also came out because Smith & Wesson's smaller K-frames that were chambered in 357 Magnum have traditionally not been known to be able to handle a steady diet of 357 Magnum just because of the just because of the amount of energy that, that round produces. The, these frames are a lot stronger than the K-frame and they are medium sized frames and they seem to handle very well 357 Magnum. Now this is a six shot revolver also and this one, this particular one is made from stainless steel. It also has adjustable sights on the top, it's serrated on the top, and this particular one has a red ramp up front to pick up. This is when Smith & Wesson was at the top of their game when they were making revolvers before the Lock series came out. And during this time, the hammers had the firing pin mounted on them and um, no internal mounted fire pan. The court that I just showed you does not have that. It has a internal mounted firing pin on it. So the hammer does not have the firing pin on it. It's a frame mounted firing pin. But this, this particular gun, when it comes from the factory, has a pretty heavy double action pull on it, and the single action is pretty good. One thing Smith & Wesson's known for is on their double action, there's no stacking or anything on them, and they're really equally smooth all the way through. Now this particular one is mine, and it had um, I had some action work done on it, and when you pull this trigger, 
about a seven to seven and a half pound pull all the way through and it really lightens up and it is very equivalent if not a little bit better feeling than that cork right here now it's up to you folks if you buy one of these smith and wessons um to have the gunsmith a competent gunsmith do the work on them but um i recommend it I think Smith & Wesson could have spent a little bit more time on their actions from the factory and not had made that had to be done, but the revolver would have cost a little bit more because of the amount of labor that went into them. So they actually did a pretty good thing is they built a really good, really strong, really well-made revolver and left it up to the consumer whether they wanted to spend the extra money to make it perfect, and I think this one's perfect. So the next one we're going to move to is a Smith & Wesson 586, which is identical to the one that I just showed you in every respect, except for this one is blued carbon steel. Now the only difference is this is a round butt um, version of it, and this is a Dash 4. So this was a little bit newer than the one that I just showed you. This one was probably made in the early 90s, late 80s, early 90s, and this is when they started transitioning to the round butt. Now, when the round butt ones came out, when this came out, I think this is the last chance you had to buy a really high quality, well built Smith & Wesson before they started cheapening them up a little bit. So this one still has the hammer mounted firing pan and all the forged parts on the inside. They just started transitioning to this round butt frame. This one came with rubber grips on it from the factory, which is a sign that Smith & Wesson was starting to cheapen things up a little bit and i elected to source out a set of these combat grips and i think it makes it look awesome really cool gun four inch configuration but these two are virtually identical besides the square butt and the round butt on them this one the top one's in stainless the 686 and the this one here is in blue and the finish on it is absolutely gorgeous i know i have a lot of fingerprints on it from sitting there showing it to you but it is a gorgeous gun and last but not least we have a colt python chambered in 357 magnum and this is not a newer released one this is an older one this one was made in 1984 and this is a polished bright factory bright stainless steel finish so this is actually stainless steel that a gunsmith sent there and hand polished out in Colt's factory in the 1980s and this is when Colt was at the top of their game with making them now this one does compare to the court because this actually was hand fitted together by one man inside of Colt's warehouse and these things are not plug and play folks you just can't replace parts in one of these like you can a Smith & Wesson you have to you have to hand fit stuff in with files and everything on them and this thing is absolutely amazing one of the things i like about the colt python is this large hammer spur on it this is the largest one out of all of them if you look i have very large hands and i have no problems reaching this this is all hand knurled on them the newer ones are a little bit different but other than that this one features the full under lug also and this one has a ventilated rib but the difference in this one and the court is this is a one piece barrel so all this is all one block of steel and on the court let me pick this up and show you side by side the profiles look similar but this is a two piece one right here on this one and this is a one piece so that's one of the, that's one of the few differences on it now one of the differences in a colt when you cycle this action it goes the complete opposite way of the previous um, two brands that i just showed you the colts always rotate clockwise when you do it now as i mentioned with the smith and wesson you can have a gunsmith go in and do some action work some polish work and change the springs and tune it and it will come out with a very smooth and very lightened trigger pull <clears throat> you do not have to do that with the colt python and the colt python was hand fit together and tuned from the factory and this action is probably the smoothest one out of all of them to be honest with you this thing is absolutely smooth it feels like a butter knife going through hot butter and from the factory you know this thing has an exceptional single action trigger and it has an exceptional double action trigger so you don't have to do anything to it but then again back in the 80s both of these guns here are stainless steel and was made in the 80s you could have bought two of these for what this one would have cost so 
you, it is get passed on to the consumer when there is extra work done on them. But I wanted to show you side by side of all these different guns, and I wanted to pick the best examples of these older vintage guns to show next to this Court 357. So to rehash, we have an 80s model. 686 Smith and Wesson and 357 Magnum stainless steel. We have a late 80s, early 90s 586 357 Magnum and carbon steel. And this one happens to be a blue finish. We have a court mongoose. This is a more modern one, hand built German made revolver, chambered in 357 Magnum. These are all in the four inch configuration. And we have a vintage 1980s Colt Python. And stainless steel chambered in 357 Magnum. Now, which one of these do I think is the best? Well, amongst all these, they're all actually tuned and done up to my liking, to where they are all pretty much equal. When when you feel the shootability about them and the triggers and all that, they're all about equal. Now, which one's worth the most? That's irrelevant, folks, to me. It doesn't matter to me. But usually these these Smith & Wessons you can, can be purchased for a lot less money than the two on the left here. Now, the Colts are new. You're going to spend a lot of money on these. The, the Colt, when you get one of these older vintage ones in, like, pretty much immaculate condition and all that, they, are, they rival the price of what the Colt is new. The Smiths. You can buy these a lot a lot less expensive and with just a little bit of money and a competent person they can be made to operate like the two on the left so i'd say build quality i'd probably go with the court the modern court and a close second being the colt python or i could switch those two and not have a problem with them and then and third place i would go with the smith and wessons and the smith and wessons are built very very well but with a little bit of work they can be brought up to parts and equal these two right here but anyway folks i wanted to show you all of them that i've compared one at a time when we put them all on the table together and see what y'all thought so i have individual videos on each one of these and you can go back if you want to reference them and see what you think about each one of them if you have any questions on any of these feel free to reach out to me and i will figure out the answer for you thank you very much for watching my video today and you folks have a great day